So how did I get functional when I was at my worst? For the record, my worst was pretty bad. Depression, chronic fatigue, anxiety, fibromyalgia, which is pain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When my closest friends had committed suicide, it wasn't great. I think one of the worst parts though was the brain fog that happens when you're in that terrible of a state. I couldn't make good decisions. I couldn't think through problems. The tool that I used the most, my mind, just wasn't working. And now I'm living a happy life. I'm in good health. I'm moving in a positive financial direction. I have great friends. I'm working as a coach and a consultant to help people regain their functionality and increase their performance to find their voice and start producing in the world. And I'm just overall a much more hopeful person. There are two major frameworks that I employed. One was give up on all the stuff that you're bad at. And the other was let go of your dreams. These are not immediately obvious frameworks. But the thing is, is self-development talks a ton about how you need to constantly build up your weaknesses. And that's true. You need to build up your weaknesses the way you need to go to the gym. Going to the gym is healthy. It makes you a more well-rounded person. It broadens you across multiple disciplines. Working on building up your weaknesses does the same thing. It makes you a healthier person. But it's not supposed to be your day job. And a lot of people that learn about working on their weaknesses start to believe that that's supposed to be how they become productive. That's supposed to be how they start to deliver in the world. But the reality is there are things that you're good at that you can do in your sleep. Things that are unique to you that you can do better than everybody else because they can't even imagine what it is that you do. And we're not wired to notice these things because people are imitative and people tend to look to others for how to improve. So as we go through the first steps of development, we lose our ability to spot what we're good at. So one of the processes that I went through was I started quitting all the stuff that I was just absolutely abysmal at. The other framework that I employed was this idea of letting go of your dreams. And this is another thing that in motivational speech world, they talk about the opposite of this. They say, dream big, go after the biggest thing you can imagine, let it inspire you, and so on and so forth. And this is true. There are times at which this works and if it works for you you should do it but this didn't work for me and I think a lot of other people because you see if you have a really big dream and you think about it every day and you start to hold yourself accountable to that way of being then you start to take on the identity of that person and when you take on that identity the actions of that person in the future make sense to you but the actions of the person you are today and the steps you need to take to become that person start to become repulsive because they feel beneath you. This doesn't happen to everybody, but there are a lot of people that if they start to think too much about the future, their ego aligns with that image. And when their ego is aligned, they want to do, be, breathe, sleep, act in the form of whatever that identity is. But the reality is you aren't there. You aren't at your big dream. You're small. You can barely do anything. And if your ego is wrapped up in this bigger version of yourself, then the small tasks required to get you there will feel unnatural. And if they feel unnatural, you won't do them. So one of the fundamental things that I did that enabled me to start doing the work was I embraced the archetype of the fool. I started to look at myself as this person that was a bit of an imbecile, a person that couldn't do much which was true. I was depressed. I was tired. I could barely do anything. I was up to my eyeballs in student debt. I was barely making rent. And when I saw myself for what I was, the small steps required to move me forward were put in perspective. And I realized that the small action that I really needed to take that day was a heroic act. Because if you identify with the great person that you want to become, a lot of times the small acts required to get you there feel like failures because you feel like you should be taking bigger steps. And the reality was I didn't need to walk on red carpets. I didn't need to do great things. I needed to pay my toll bills. I needed to put an extra $5 on my student loans. And when I took on the identity of, you know what, I'm not capable of executing on my dreams right now, and I am a bit of an imbecile, and I'm not doing much that's all that great, it was the first time in my life when suddenly the small step that I had to take that day felt like a real accomplishment. It was the first time that putting an extra $5 on my student loans felt like a win, not a loss. 
because I let go of the identity of, oh, I should be this person that makes a whole bunch of money and then just pays the whole thing off with one check. I stopped thinking about the weights that I lifted in the gym as pathetic, because I wasn't as strong as I thought that I should have become. And I started to realize that the fact that I was in the gym at all was a victory. And as I did this, the consistent victories rewired my brain so that I became a person who was winning. So if you take small actions, when your ego is in a place where those small actions feel pathetic, you feel like a loser, and you do less and less and less. But if you take actions when your ego has the correct perspective, and you understand that your small steps are really something to be proud of, then you feel like you've won, and winning makes you want to win more. So over time, I started to get more functional because I continued to do the small things that needed to be done. And at first, the results weren't obvious. Yes, I felt a little calmer. Yes, I had a little more energy. Yes, I felt a little bit better. But the metrics that my ego was wrapped up in beforehand, those metrics didn't change for a long time. I didn't start making a lot more money right away. I didn't start building a friends group. I didn't start becoming more attractive. I didn't start building anything of significance for several years. But what was happening was I was putting in the linear work that gets you compound results. So no matter where you are in life, you need to do the small things that will over time get you big results. How you do that is different depending on your psychology. The way I did it does not work for everybody. And if mainstream advice works for you, use mainstream advice. But for me, taking on this identity of the person that couldn't reach his dreams yet and had to be at peace with that, and a person that was a little bit inept and needed to take realistic steps for him, when I took on this identity, I was able to stomach the small steps. And those small steps over time started to snowball. And now I'm getting outsized returns for my input every year and it's building over time. Because I'm doing healthy things that are sustainable, that don't feel glamorous in the moment, but my ego is aligned with them, and I realize this is the work that I need to do today. And now I am light years ahead of the person that I used to be. So if you can let go of your dreams and give up on the stuff that you're bad at, and be willing to do the small things that you need to do to move forward, you will outpace your past self. And you will beat everybody that's looking for the perfect formula, and no one will notice you for the first couple of years. And if you're willing to give it time, pretty soon, they'll all start calling you and asking you how you're able to get the results that you get today.